So it turns out that a lot of genetics, a lot of inheritance patterns do follow Mendel's laws that he developed so long ago. However, there are some exceptions to that. There are some inheritance patterns that are just more complex and they can't be explained just with, with the laws that Mendel developed. So we're gonna take a look at two examples of that, more complex inheritance patterns. The first one is called incomplete dominance. Incomplete dominance, this is referring to um, the fact that the offspring of a cross, so the hybrids from a cross, they might actually have a phenotype that's somewhere midway between the two parents. So in this case, looking at this slide, um, we've got we've got the parent plants up here. One is red, the other is white. These are both pure breeding plants. And then the cross between them ends up leading to a plant that produces pink flowers, all right? So midway between red and white. So that's called incomplete dominance. It's not like the red allele is completely masking the white allele. Um, it's, it's an incomplete dominance. We can see the red, but it's not fully masking the presence of white. So that's incomplete dominance. Codominance is the other more complex inheritance pattern we're going, going to introduce here. So with codominance, um, essentially what we see in the phenotype is both alleles are apparent. And a great example of this is um, with blood types. So I'm sure you've heard of like a person can have either, either blood type A or B or blood type O, or they could have blood type AB. Okay, so the difference between all of those, the difference it turns out is um, based on the red blood cells, which we all have. Okay, it turns out our red blood cells are decorated with carbohydrates on the surface. And depending on the type of carbohydrate that's present, that dictates the type of blood that we say this person has. So this individual right here, um, that carbohydrate is, is the type that we call A. This individual down here, they have a different carbohydrate. We call this type B. It is totally possible to have both of those carbohydrates present. So this person has blood type AB, right? Because both are present. Blood type O means that there are none of those carbohydrates. The carbohydrates are missing. Um, and so, so that's a different blood type. This becomes really important in the context of um, blood transfusions. So it turns out, and this is getting a little bit in depth with, with biology, but it's, it's interesting. Let's go ahead and mention it here. It turns out for any given person, let me just point to this one right here, a person with blood type A, their immune system is going to be really good at recognizing other blood types. So for example, if this person were to receive a blood transfusion from someone with type B blood, um, to, to this person's body, that's going to look like foreign substances. The immune system will at attack that type B blood. And so what will end up happening is clumping will result. The immune system will cause these um, foreign cells to clump together, and that can be a really serious problem. That can lead to clots and, and other really serious problems. So this is something that um, people have to be really careful about, doctors and nurses. If they are giving a blood transfusion, they need to make sure that the blood types match up appropriately. O is called a universal donor because it's okay. It's okay if this person donates blood to this individual. Okay, If you take blood type O and put it in this person's body, there's not going to be that immune reaction because there's like no carbohydrates present. So there's nothing foreign really to recognize and attack. So that's why type O is considered the universal donor, um, which is very nice when people of blood type O um, contribute to blood banks for that reason. Finally, just to wrap out our consideration of more complex inheritance patterns here, just as a note, there are some genes that do not assort independently. So they don't follow that rule that Mendel figured out. And that's because we can have multiple genes, we do have multiple genes encoded on the same physical chromosome. And in that case, those genes are said to be linked. They are linked because they're physically present on the same chromosome. So it turns out that they tend to be inherited together. Uh, there is one exception to that, and it has to do back with crossing over that we considered in the context of meiosis. So if we take 
um, this chromosome that's shown in blue, right, um, it, genes A, B, and C, we would say that these are linked. They are all present physically on the same chromosome. So they tend to be inherited together. But the exception can come up in the context of meiosis. If some of those genes get swapped around, and so here's the final result after meiosis. Uh, we've got some recombinant chromosomes. And um, so it turns out that this capital C did not get inherited with this capital B, right? Because these are going to split apart. So anyway, that's something that can make it seem like these genes inherit independently. Um, but in other cases, maybe they don't inherit independently. Like A and B, these did not get separated from each other. They're still present physically on the same chromosome. So some things can be linked like that. Color blindness is an example of a sex-linked trait. So these, uh, the genes that encode for color vision, it just happens that they're present on the sex chromosomes. So sex chromosomes include genes that determine sex, but also many other things, actually. And um, specifically, the gene for color vision is something that's present on the X chromosome. So for women, women always, women get two copies of X chromosomes, one from mom and one from dad. And so if there's one copy of the X chromosome that's faulty, uh, maybe has a, a mutated form of the color vision gene, um, it's in most cases it's okay because it's like she has a backup copy so she'll still have one normal version of um, the color vision gene. In men, color blindness is more common and that's because they only get one copy of the X chromosome. So it's much more common to have a colorblind male than it is to have a colorblind female.